Hi, Roy here on my channel which is called Yard of Random Books and today a bit of a catch up on the week, stuff I've been reading, things that are going to happen in the channel in the near future and um, an entry from the, the physical yard of so-called random books from which this channel takes its name. So it's back to school for me and that's had an, an effect that I kind of anticipated which is that the course I'm on gives me a lot of reading to do uh, which is great it's all stuff I want to read kind of with an added bonus of you know and now I'll be reading it for a purpose so the course is a masters in 19th century studies the module I'm doing this term is theatre and theatricality and sort of stuff I'll be reading for that Oliver Twist Charles Dickens Oliver Twist which I've never read and which I'm really enjoying what I've read so far um, and also some uh, non-fiction academic texts such as theatre in the Victorian age and also, because as well as the module, I'm working on a dissertation about occult detectives. So lots of stuff about things like crime, uh, crime fiction, and things like spiritualism and psychic investigations and that kind of thing in the 19th century. So next on my pile from that, in that strand of reading, is late Victorian crime fiction in the shadows of Sherlock by Claire Clark. So these things coming along is kind of like being plunged into Victober, um, almost Victober with benefits in that I'm doing it for another purpose. So I might do more about this sort of stuff, but stuff I read this week that kind of got in under the wire before the, before the 19th century overwhelmed me. Um, Vampire Lover by Charlotte Lamb. So this is a Mills and Boone novel from 1994. This is the kind of book where it arrives, immediately positions itself at the very top of the, the pile, and I just read it in, in one day. So I only got it out of curiosity. So an early 90s Mills and Boones called Vampire Lover. Or is it? Is it a vampire who is a lover, or is it a lover of vampires? And I think these days Mills and Boone actually have a whole line of paranormal romances full of vampires, but pretty sure back in these times it would be really unusual to have a, an actual supernatural vampire or supernatural anything else in a Mills and Boone. Um, and I'm not going to give too much away because I would highly recommend this as one of the maddest books ever possible to read with your eyes. It's very playful. There's lots of stuff about is can this guy actually be a vampire? Loads of things that happen in vampire stories happen in this, but it's always like, but it, could it be real? So, for instance, um, he, it looks like he hasn't shown up in a reflection, but maybe she just didn't see him creeping up on her. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it sort of makes sense, too, to have a vampire as the male figure in that a lot of these romances seem to have very forceful, assertive men as the as the sort of um, love interest with the female point of view character. Um, so why not have the apex predator of all mankind a vampire? as the as as the guy so there's all of that going on and, and there's this stuff that's like um again like i say playful so this this guy he's a film director uh, and he's come to the uk to make a film of the tenant of wildfell hall the the gothic novel by one of the brontes um so far so good but then <laughs> about two thirds of the way through there's a massive role reversal and some insane BDSM stuff happens that my eyes were popping out and um, I honestly don't know what it is I've read. So Vampire Lover by Charlotte Lamb. 
was my my farewell to uh, to lowbrow fiction for a while, possibly. So there was that. I also finished Ithaca by Claire North, which I had from the library. It's gone back to the library. Perfectly possible that near future editor Roy will now, with the speed of Hermes, conjure an image of the book for us to see. But Ithaca, Ithaca by Claire North, just out. Great. Really enjoyed it. It's Greek mythology from a new female perspective. You've got the goddess Hera as the narrator. You've got Penelope from the Odyssey stuck on this island with all these sleazy blokes because her, her husband Odysseus is away doing the Odyssey, uh, as it were. So, um, you know, how how's all that going to work out? It's fantastic. Really recommend it. Um, also, reading Lost Horizon as part of a group read on MJ's Discord. So the one I got was this old pan paperback from the early 50s. It's one of those paperbacks that's so old and worn and been so well read uh, that it's it's almost like leathery. Uh, and as for the story itself, great, never read it. Really interesting kind of oriental romance kind of thing. But it made me think, I mean, I, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say it's the story with Shangri-La in it, this kind of hidden civilization in the Himalayas where strange things happen. And it made me think how that Himalayan hidden Tibetan thing is such a such a common trope. Now, I don't know if that originated with this book that came out in the early 30s or whether James Hilton was simply pulling together stuff that was already floating around. You know, I've read that the idea goes back to maybe Marco Polo. But Tibetan hidden civilizations. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a, a thriller show on the TV called The Champions. So those guys, they're like super powered secret agents, really, because they 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 crashed in the Himalayas and the, the monks gave them the, the, the secret, the, the extra powers. Um, you got things like Iron Fist in Marvel, where guy crash lands in the Himalayas, monks, secret civilization, and it's like martial arts with a kind of slightly mystical edge. So Iron Fist, he can focus his chi, as I'm doing now, into his fist, and it like starts blazing and he can punch holes in things. So, um, yep, just warming up. Um, so there's that, and I think that Doctor Strange is school he goes to that's kind of in that zone as well even non-fiction stuff like uh, when <laughs> when I was growing up there was a um, a series of mystical books by a supposed Tibetan Lama called T. Lobsang Rampa a very popular corgi paperbacks um, and the a lady who lived near our school painted some of the covers which kind of diffused the the the, the sort of exotic air of them but again, anyway, just saying, Himalayan, secret things, weird things happen in Tibet. Here's an example of that. Maybe it was the first one. Not sure. Okay, so still working my way through the Yard of Random Books, the shabby chic books I wrote. I wrote? I didn't write any of them. I bought them to... See what it's like to actually read them, these discarded volumes. And the one I landed on this week is called Acting Games by Frida Collins. So this comes from the late 40s. It's basically a book for, I suppose, teachers, how to put together acting games for kids to play. And it's very, th very thorough. You get little diagrams of how the where the characters need to be positioned, some really good illustrations by, um, that's a rather alarming one there, from a nativity play, play where this fox is being banned from the nativity, which is not sure about the theology of that. Um, 
but uh, yeah who does the illustrations Helen Jacobs Helen Jacobs um, and read through it it's, it's, it's interesting I you know you, you don't think of loads of work going into planning as to how a, a sort of infants or primary school play is going to work um, but um, here we have kind of theory of it using the child's own imagination but just one of them just in terms of like how attitudes have changed this one called the crooked sixpence struck me for its kind of psychotic violent content really so um cast old woman pig dog stick fire water ox butcher rope rat and cat uh, so there are the characters arranged in a semicircle um, so basically an old woman finds a sixpence and uses it to buy a pig and she's taking the pig home gets to a stile and the pig is not going to jump over the stile basically so she's stuck with this pig can't get it over the fence uh, and it's one of these kind of cumulative things where one thing happens after another and they kind of build up like the old woman who swallowed the fly that kind of thing there's probably a technical name for that kind of story so she's stuck with a pig who she now sees as naughty um, so this would be a child with a kind of pig pig costume on um, the dog comes along ah there is a little dog he will help me dog dog bite pig pig will not jump over style I shan't get home till morning so she wants the dog to bite the pig to encourage it to jump over the fence dog's not having any of it too busy eating a bone okay so then she finds a stick ah here's a stick wants the stick to beat the dog right that just probably isn't happening in an infant school today there'd be letters to from parents etc um, but the stick's too busy making a fence diligent diligent stick work there happening um, so then she finds a fire it wants this fire to burn the stick harsh but now it's too busy burning some leaves goes along a bit further find some water can you put the fire out uh, no no too busy watering plants finds an ox wants the ox to drink the water so because it won't put out the fire to burn the stick the dog you know all of that building up um, with each kind of each iteration now the ox is plowing so they're not going to do that here's a butcher butcher kill the ox because it won't drink the water etc the whole chain of cause and effect necessary to accomplish her aim is not happening because of this ox so let's kill the ox butcher no I'm too busy selling meat again reasonable reasonable excuse here's a rope rope hang the butcher that's the instruction to the child dressed as a rope hang the butcher but no nope, too busy making a ladder that would be a rope ladder I suppose uh, da 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 same thing there's a rat supposed to gnaw the rope not going to do that because it likes to steal corn uh, da, cat um, wants to cat to eat the rat finally the cat asks for a reward give me some milk and I will do what you ask so she happens to have some milk with her and I know I can't say milk properly it's a long story anyway cat gets its milk and then things happen fortunately all the death and destruction doesn't happening the cat began to kill the rat the rat began to gnaw the rope the rope began to hang the butcher again this would be sheer surreal carnage if you visualized maybe it's maybe it's the best children's play ever I don't know all of those things happen finally there's a, the dog begins gives the gives the pig a little bite and um, it goes over the fence everybody's happy and the kids go home and tell their parents what they did at school involving the hanging burning gnawing etc 
Fantastic. So, I've admi ad admired, I've advanced the Yard of Random Books by another half an inch. These are my bookish activities that I've now told you about. And I will be back soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for anyone who subscribes, comments, likes, all that sort of stuff. It's really good. Um, and I'll see you next time. Um, still planning to do booktube stuff. But it might be a little bit more spread out than it has been in the past. But we'll see. Maybe I'll be inspired to do thousands more videos. We'll see. Okay, cheers everybody.